Hi Circuit Riders, welcome back. Um, we are in this video going to head from Virginia down to Florida. I can't wait to get down to the sunny weather in Florida. And along the way, it's gonna be our first time ever stopping at a Cracker Barrel overnight. So I'm excited to show you that. We're not sure exactly how it's gonna work, so you can come along with us. But just real briefly, we've been in Northern Virginia for the past three weeks, and we've done some fun historical sites up here. Um, I didn't do a lot of footage, but right now we're at the George Washington Birthplace, which is a National Park unit. Uh, this is some land that George Washington Washington's family owned for generations before he was born and it's right near the Potomac River. This is a little inlet here but the Potomac River is right on the other side of this which made for really easy um, commerce and shipping of their crops out. So this is a real prime piece of land and I can see why it was so desirable. Unfortunately, none of the buildings that are here are authentic. Um, there's nothing original here from his birth. They've just did kind of a reconstruction of what a, a gentleman's farmhouse might have looked like in the 1700s and some outbuildings and uh, the, the fields and stuff. But it's still really cool to be here where he was born on this land. Also in Northern Virginia is the birthplace of another president, James Monroe, was born right near here, uh, much later than George Washington. So that was a fun, again, a replica house, but that house was built from the original blueprint, so at least it's designed the same way, not the original house. And um, also nearby is the birthplace of General Robert E. Lee, who was the Confederate general during the Civil War, and his house is original, and uh, there's a lot of great stuff to see at that site and we were able to tour the inside of that house uh, much more you know of an upscale uh, wealthier family and farm there so lots of fun historical things to do here in the tidewater of northern virginia and now we're going to take our little walk around here and tomorrow get ready to go Ooh, it is early and we have got a long drive ahead of us today. <laughs> This is a good campground. We hadn't been here before. We've been in the region and it was nice. Mm -hmm. Time is it? 7.06. We were on the road at seven. I hopped in the seat, put it in drive and inch forward just a titch at seven on the dot. Good job we were, everybody. We were pulled out of our spot <laughs> onto the park road at, by 7.04. Okay, it is the Saturday after Thanksgiving and we are just gonna pull into a Cracker Barrel uh, parking lot. I'm sure there'll be plenty of space for us. <laughs> it should be an easy travel day Hop too. Hop in and have some dinner. It's a weekend. Weekends are usually nice for driving. Right, yeah. yeah. Shouldn't be too much traffic. Not on a Saturday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> so we have three Cracker Barrel options. There's two in Savannah and one about an hour, 45 minutes south of Savannah. So if the first one doesn't have anything, and actually I think we're just gonna go straight to the second one, but the third one is the one that has the most parking spaces. It's gonna be, we'll see how bad the traffic is and how far we get. So if you didn't know, Cracker Barrel, I think is one of the last remaining guaranteed overnight RV parking lots in the country. You know, there's a lot of Walmarts that are no longer allowing overnight parking. Sometimes you can use Bass Pro or Cabela's, but again, you have to call ahead and a lot of them aren't doing it anymore. But I think pretty consistently Cracker Barrel is still open for RVers. So we are excited to try this for the first time. We've never parking lot surfed anywhere. Yeah, the closest we've come is Casinos. Oh, that's true. It's we kind of we like that. Casino, but you kind but of it, have to like register. But even those were there. a little more straightforward. Yeah, there's like security and you have to sign in official. at the casino, at least the casinos that we've been to. Yeah, and then Harvest Toast is businesses, but again, that's you know ahead of time that they. they and that's have, you have to have a membership for yeah. that. So yeah. Cracker Barrel, you can pretty much quote. And when we've never done like a rest stop or a truck stop overnight, except for that one time that we <laughs> broke down, we we've did do a truck stop overnight. We've never voluntarily done one. Okay. We have, so I guess we've done a smattering of these kind of things, but we've never seen it at a Cracker Barrel. <laughs>
All right, where are we? I saw my first palm tree. I knew I would be on the right track when we got to South Carolina. I could see palm trees. I'm very excited. Here we go. Well, we've been driving for a little over 10 hours now. This is a really unusual uh, length of drive for us. We usually don't drive for this long and we certainly don't like to arrive anywhere in the dark. But um, since we're just pulling into a parking lot, you know, and it's right off the highway, we're, we're comfortable with that. So, and we've switched already twice. You've driven once. I drove twice. once and he's and I, driven yeah, twice. Yeah, I'm on my second round. Yeah. So that breaks it up. So it's hard. We don't notice as much when we do that. So that's not too bad. Since it's getting a little dark, I just wanted to give you an update. The traffic was really, really great until about 3 p.m. So we left at 7 o'clock this morning, and until about 3, we, we kind of sailed through Virginia and North Carolina into South Carolina. And then um, about a couple hours ago, the traffic started getting really bad. So we had, I said we had three options for Cracker Barrels. Um, the first one we kind of dismissed because it the parking lot wasn't very big there, and it wasn't as far as we wanted to get. So... There's two other options, one in Savannah, um, and then one about 45 minutes south of Savannah. So we're we're gauging the traffic and the time right now. It looks like we would get to the Savannah one at 6 p.m. And if we kept going to the one that was farther south, we would get there about 6.45. So it's right in the middle of the dinner hour and we're trying to gauge if we go to the farther one, do we risk not being able to find a parking space because the par parking lot's gonna fill up more? Um, but we would love to get as far as we can before dinner, and it's really not that late if we eat at 7.30, you know? And there's no That's setup fine. and tear down with what we're doing. Right, we're so. just pulling it. We're not even unhooking the truck or anything. So I think we've decided that we're going to barrel on through and um, try to go to the farther south one. Also, that one shouldn't be as busy because it's not as big of a city. Savannah, I think, is going to be, the, the restaurant will be busy and the parking lot will be full. But um, maybe bigger, the southern one. It's a one much bigger they have many more spots the other It's way. a bigger parking lot, but not in a city. Which and we've is looked kind at of... some backup plans too. So there's a couple harvest hosts that are within the region there. So we could we could possibly have some fallback options. Even I mean, if... this Cracker Barrel parking lot looks like it has about 18 parking spots for RVs in the back of the lot. So if that's full, like where we're going to be maybe in trouble. I, I would be really shocked if that was totally full of rigs, but we'll see. All right, we're going to keep going. We got about another hour and a half, and then we'll show you when we get there. Hello, kitty. We are in a bit of a small road now because we're trying to avoid this big uh, backup on Route 95 South. That's like an hour, almost an hour slowdown over there, so we're on this little local road which is about a 20 minute slowdown, but um, it's it's going pretty well. And uh, it's nice to just be off of the highway for a little bit, but it's a little bit bumpy for Ella, though she's done a great job. She's been in here for 10 hours now. I've got the litter box in the back. I brought food and water for her, but she's not interested in any of it. Whenever she's traveling, she kind of just hunkers down and doesn't want anything to do with, with anything. So, um, <laughs> but she's doing okay. And as soon as we get there, of course, she'll, she'll eat and drink a whole bunch. All right, we made it to the Cracker Barrel, and there's plenty of spaces here, but there's also a good amount of rigs here. What do you think about six, Half six or seven? Half dozen or so. Yeah, rigs out and there. There was one here that pulled out, so some people some were just people, stopping over for dinner, I Yeah, think, might and... just be here for dinner. They might not be overnight, and some more people might come when, once it gets later. So we're off to the side um, because we were too long to fit in the RV spot without unhooking the truck, so we're just off to the side where the little spaces are, but out of the way, which is great because that means our stairs are out on the grass and we're not like right next to somebody else. But I just wanted to show you um, what our rig looks like when the slides are in. We've put the slide out a little bit, but... A little bit out and sit. Right. You didn't get your feet wet. So we just put our, our main slide out a little bit so we can walk through there. But when you come inside, we still have pretty full access to the fridge. We can open this side all the way. And this side partially, you don't want to hit that counter there. And we can open the freezer partially just to get our hand in there a little bit. We cannot get into the pantry. Um, and normally we wouldn't be able to walk down here, but we've just extended. When our slides extend, this park side comes out first. 
before the kitchen slide. So the grass side is just out maybe a foot or a foot and a half so we can get through here. Um, and that way Ella can also access her food back here. And we can have a little bit more freedom. And we freedom. can also access Ella if she's back there. Yeah, she can't escape from us quite as easy. And then we've got full access to the bathroom. Which we always do. And we would, we also have full access to the bed. Um, we may put the bed slide out to sleep because again, this is the park grass side and there's nobody over there. It's just the highway on the other side. So we could put the bed slide out if we wanted to. But you don't need to. So when this is we parked with the slides completely in, you can get to the bedroom, the bathroom, most of the fridge pretty easily. You just can't, you'd have to climb over to get to the other end of the RV, which you don't need to, like the sink and all that living room end. All right, well, it's, 7.30, we've been on the road for 12 and a half hours. It took us about yeah, 12 hours to get stops. here. Like, yep. It's probably 11 and a half hours of driving, mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess. But we did good. And um, let's go get some dinner at Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> It's 5 30 a.m but we were both awake so we said let's go to be in Florida. We are. How was your Cracker Barrel experience? It was uh, just fine. Yep, it was just fine. Yeah, that's, it served its purpose. I slept fine. I did too. Yeah, even but though we both woke, But we both woke up early yeah, at the yeah. road. It was right near the highway, so it was loud, but with earplugs and noisemaker. Yeah, I didn't notice good. with the noisemaker going. I'd do it again, but Harvest House maybe is a better choice because it's a little quieter. Yeah, Harvest Toast and Boondockers Welcome, you're a little less public. Even the business version, which is the Harvest Host, is often a little bit off the beaten path. You're not in a giant, you know, shopping, shopping complex or where there's lots of foot traffic or vehicles coming and going. Right. Uh, which for some people, that, that, that could be a, a reason to pick the other versions. Uh, very convenient. Yep. Very convenient right off the highway. Yeah, you can eat right there. Yeah. Well, we have made it to Florida. Here's my, my palm trees that I've been waiting for and we are so excited to be in the warm, sunny weather of Florida for the whole winter. It's early December right now. We are gonna be here until mid-March. So we are planning to stay in the state of Florida for the entire winter, but we will be hopping around and doing the Thousand Trails shuffle that they call because um, with our membership in Thousand Trails, we can only stay for a maximum of two weeks. N normally it's three weeks at a Thousand Trails, but 
they've recently instituted this high season restriction in Florida and, and some other parks in the country too, where you can only stay for a maximum of two weeks at a time in the high season. So we're gonna be hopping around every one to two weeks. We're gonna throw some boondockers welcomes in there um, just to span our time for the next three and a half months. We are at a Thousand Trails Encore Park um, and encores tend to be a mixture of some Thousand Trails uh, sites and other more seasonal or year round trailers and houses and uh, sites. So this one is definitely that this, it's mostly year round trailers and lots of seasonal sites with the RV spots are kind of smattered in between the trailers. But we've got a great site here nearby this little pond and we're really enjoying ourselves. Anyway, I probably won't um, do very many videos down here because the events that we're doing are connected with Jason's work and personal family things. And you know, we're just here, we're just basking in the sun and not a lot of sightseeing or new things to see for us here. Um, we'll probably hit Disney at some point and my family is coming down here for Christmas to Orlando, my parents and my brothers and their families and our kids. So we're having a big family celebration for Christmas. And then Jason has two work conferences that happen to be in Florida this year, uh, and one in January and one in early March and then we've got a retreat with some of his colleagues so we are looking forward to spending lots of time visiting with friends visiting with family and I hope you guys have a great holiday season with your family and friends and we will see you probably early next year uh, but make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and that way you'll be notified when we put up our next video so until then thanks for watching and I hope you have a great month bye guys